Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 1994 classic film, Little Women. So this is another iteration of the classic 1860s, 1880s book of the same name, Little Women. I think it came out in the 1880s. This is... Man, it's just... There's so many versions of this. There's so many stage versions of this. There's so many musical versions of this. There's so many film versions of this. And there's a 2019 version that just came out recently. Um, Gerda Ger Gerwig actually directed it. And it's it, do, it did so well at the box office. Did incredible with ratings. And uh, the 94 version with Renata Ryder did incredible as well. It takes place at Christmas. Um, it's just... I've, I've seen the 05 Broadway musical version the most. Um, with the different stage productions, just memorizing the soundtrack, just listen to, listening to it on repeat. So it's weird for me to see a movie that's not a musical of it. It's the same story. I mean, there's certain things added in, you know, as all adaptations are, because it's all adapted from the original book. Um, but like... Bro, when Beth dies, it's just, it still gets me every time. It doesn't matter if it's the musical version or not. It's just such a hard scene to watch. I it, I don't get it. It's just, you just feel like you know these characters. And it's interesting because I saw that, I've seen the stage production so many times. I used to, I used to act. So this one theater I was, I was uh, performing at. Um, was doing two shows at the same time. So the show that I would normally do was always normally like morning, afternoon. And then like they would act, they had a, a version of Little Women playing at night. And a lot of the times I was, a, I was allowed to just hang out with the guys in the sound booth um, or the lighting booth. And we would just, I would watch the show as they would do the cues and use the spotlights and things. And it was just a wonderful experience. I would finish <laughs> clocking out with the production I was doing, change, get into my street clothes, eat something, and then hang out with the guys in the light booth and just just hang out with the crew and just and just watch the show and the spotlight slowly fading and compressing into Beth as she dies and then that's it it's just it still gets me all these years later and watching Beth die in a bed scene with uh with Joe next to her it was just so so hard to watch it as a non-musical version I like that there's two different Christmases within this I like that also it's like a 10-year time period you have an early Amy March played by Kirsten Dunst. You have an older Amy March played by Claire Danes. Uh, Susan Sarandon's in this. Uh, who else? Christian Bale plays uh, uh, Teddy Laurie, Theodore Lawrence, if you will. Um, you have Winona Wire playing Joe March. So to have to have the March sisters, you got Joe, you got Beth, you got Amy, you got Meg. Having them all come together, Susan Sarandon being their mother, who they call Marmy. Um, it's just a wonderful story it's it's a wonderful coming of age kind of story about these four sisters living in living during the civil war and then post civil war because their father's a chaplain uh who gets injured during the civil war um and then we get the time jump four years later and then many years later etc cetera, etc cetera, as people grow age finish school get married have kids stuff like that so i just i just find it interesting that this particular thing is about about an hour and I was still enamored with it. I've seen the I've seen the musical version so many times, and it's a story that still brings me to tears. I think it's just because you just feel so familiar with these characters that you root for them, you you cry with them, you fear with them, you champion them. You're like, okay, what's what's next? What are we gonna do next? You know, you don't have to stay with the norm. You don't have to do what's expected of you. What do you want to do next? It's just neat. It's neat seeing it. It's neat experiencing it. It's neat having this as a familiar. When Winona's character of Joe says something to to Frederick, the uh, the German professor that she's hanging out with in Manhattan, and then later accepts a marriage proposal, um, she picks up a copy of his, a, a German copy of his because he's from Germany of uh, of Shakespeare, and she says, you know, every time I f I re read Shakespeare, it just feels like I'm home. That it's just a sense of home. And that's what these characters feel like, a sense of home. You just feel at home with these characters. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just, it's not even nostalgia. It's just comfort. It's just home. And I'm very curious when I watch the 2019 version, because I will be watching that next. That's on our docket. We're going to watch back to back Little Women to Little Women. Am I going to feel the same home? I have a feeling I am. 
But, bro, the acting in this 94 version is incredible. I mean, to, to watch young Kristen Bale, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, to watch young Christian Bale um, as the 90s heartthrob that he was, because he's been acting since he was a kid, technically. Um, watch young Renona, Winona Ryder. Again, she was a, 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 is heartthrob the term for female or is heartthrob just the term for male? I don't know now. Uh, what was the terms they used back then? Babe? Such a babe? Sure. Uh, we'll use that term. Watching young Winona Ryder alongside young Christian Bale. Awesome. Watching a tiny little Kirsten Dunst um, right before, this was before Jumanji too. Jumanji was what, 97? And uh, when was interview with the vampire, that was around the same time period as well. She's been acting since she was a kid. So to see her age then into her teens and then 20s and then 30s and 40s, it's neat watching her grow as an actress and watching her grow as a human. So I also like that because they jumped the time, because that's how the story goes. It's a time jump. Um, they had to get Claire Danes as the older Amy and to have then Laurie and Amy come together at the end. That was, again, Laurie becoming f part of the family finally, becoming part of the March family finally. It's just very, it's it's neat. It's just a wonderful story. It's a wonderful, what happens next. It's uh, it's it's great Christmas film in general. It's just really cool seeing that Victorian American time period because this takes place primarily in Concord, Massachusetts. Um, how does that kind of Christmas celebrating work? Actual candles on trees, stuff like that. So love it. Absolutely love it. I wish it was a musical <laughs> just because I'm so used to it. And I want a movie version of the musical. I, 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 we're, do, we're doing Mean Girls in what, two months? January of 20, January of 24. That's when the, I'm currently recording this, November 11th. 11 11, make a wish, of uh, 23. Mean Girls comes out in two months, technically, January of 24. Mean Girls, the musical, Mean Girls, the movie musical comes out January of 24. I want a Little Women movie musical. I would love a Little Women in Space movie musical. That would be so crazy. I would love it. It would be so cool. That musical is awesome, man. Give it a chance. Give it a listen on Spotify. You can uh, get the sound. It's the 2005 version with Sutton Foster, who plays Joe. Uh, Sutton just does everything. She's going to be uh, Mrs. Lovett in uh, Sunni Todd coming up. She just does everything. She was Princess Fiona in Shrek the Musical. She was Millie in Thoroughly Modern Millie. She's just done everything. We love Sutton. We love Sutton. We love Little Women. We love Little Women 2005 Broadway musical. We love Little Women 1994 film. And I guarantee you, I'm going to love the 2019 Greta Gerwig film as well. On to the next review. Wish you a hello.